Well, good morning uh, to our uh, welcome to our pastor's coffee. Uh, each Tuesday, we we gather to kind of uh, reflect on uh, things God spoke to us over the weekend as uh, as we congregated together, whether via uh, social media or in person, and just had a great great gathering this last Sunday uh, with our. Uh, Youth worship team did a great job leading the worship and just was a, was a powerful day. And I just want to, again, as we're in our series, we're in a series right now called Kingdom Advance, Dressed for Victory. This Sunday, Pastor Nikki will uh, continue to uh, talk about the armor, uh, move us on to the next piece of armor that we've been studying. It's going to be, uh, going to be a great, great message uh, that'll be happening as we're talking about being dressed for victory. And last Sunday, I just addressed the whole idea that God has called the church to advance, to be kingdom advancers. Called, we're called kingdom advance, dressed for victory. The church is the one who advances the kingdom. And today, I just want to reflect on a few verses as we consider this. Uh, Matthew 16, you know the story where Jesus says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then he goes on and he says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And we've really been talking about the idea of the church. The ecclesia is the word that Jesus uses in this text. It was a secular word used in, in, the, in the Roman and Greek culture. And the word... Uh, really was not, it wasn't a religious word, but it dealt with the get, coming together of a governing body. And what God wants the church to see is that we are the ecclesia. We are the ones who God has given authority that whatever we bind on earth has already been bound in heaven. Whatever we loose has already been loosed in heaven. So we, as we know what is going on in heaven, we have the authority to release that under the earth. We have the authority, if it's not going on in heaven, we have the authority to bind it on the earth. That God has given us authority as uh, as the ecclesia. And we really, uh, last Sunday, I encourage you to go and watch the, uh, the, the, the message if you were unable to get it. But it is crucial that we get this truth, that we are the ecclesia. And we talked about, again, the idea that where two or more are gathered, the authority of the kingdom is in their midst, Matthew chapter 18. God's authority is in the midst of two or three believers as they come together. So again, as we're talking about kingdom advance, we're sharing where there's two or three, the ecclesia that, that literally is the church, and they have authority to bind and loose marketplaces in our neighborhoods, within our families. We literally become the church, the expression of the church who has this authority to bind and loose. So I want to go to a, a few verses today in Acts chapter 2. Uh, if you got your Bibles, I encourage you, if you don't, grab them real quick. Acts chapter 2, 46. And I want us to see here this idea that we have to get the church outside of this concept that it's a Sunday morning gathering. No, we are the church. The people of God, the called out ones, are the ecclesia, the ones who are to go out and advance the kingdom into the, into the culture, into the society. We have been given authority to bind and loose. We've been, we've been given the gospel of the kingdom to declare the word that has power to transform lives. But we've got to get it out of this concept that church is a Sunday morning meeting. No, the church is wherever two or three are gathered in his name. That's the ecclesia. That's the people of God gathered together, going out, advancing the kingdom into the earth. Now, here in Acts 2.46, it says this. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. The church from house to house, it wasn't just in the synagogue. It was house to house. The church was meeting and they were that governing body that was executing authority, edifying one another, building one another up. Now, Acts chapter 5, verse number 42, says this. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. What were they doing in the temple? But then also in the houses, the ecclesia was meeting, teaching and preaching Jesus, bringing over their neighbors, 
having breaking bread with their neighbors who don't know Christ, bring them there, and they were teaching and preaching Jesus. They were evangelizing. They were ministering to their neighborhood, the marketplace, in their job areas. They were sharing the gospel. Now look what 528 of Acts says. This is powerful. Acts 528, saying, did we not strictly command you not to teach in this? They were persecuting the church. And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. They had filled Jerusalem with the doctrine. How did they do that? It wasn't by the Sunday morning meetings, quote unquote, the temple gatherings, the Saturday gatherings for them. It wasn't by that. It was from house to house teaching and preaching the gospel. They were advancing the kingdom, not just on a Sunday morning meeting, but they were spreading it out throughout the week, throughout the, every day of the week, where two or three were gathered. They were sharing the gospel. They were spreading the gospel. This is what's going to transform the culture. This is what's going to transform the culture. When we realize as the church, the ecclesia, we are kingdom advancers. We are those who spread the kingdom throughout our culture, neighborhood, marketplace, families, etc., etc., etc. Now, I, I won't take the time because I want to get to uh, Matthew and, and I want to look at a couple of things from Matthew. But we see in Acts 19.10 that in two years, all of Asia heard the gospel. It's, it's talking about how Paul was there in, in, uh, in Ephesus and then in two years, he was there two years, and it says the gospel, the kingdom was spread all over Asia. Everybody heard. How did that happen? By one man, Paul, or by a one time a week meeting? No. The church realized, the ecclesia realized they were kingdom advancers. They were spreading it as they went. In Matthew, when it says, go and make disciples, the verb there, the action word is make disciples. That's what we're to do. The word go is as you're going, make disciples. So as we go about our life, we are to be making disciples. The action, what we're to be engaged in, is making disciples. That's what was happening in Acts 19. The, the ecclesia, Paul was teaching in the synagogue and, 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 and spreading it. But the church realized we advance the kingdom. We are the ones who spread the seed of the kingdom into the culture. So as they were going... They were spreading the gospel of the kingdom. They were preaching the good news of the kingdom. They were preaching and teaching about Christ. And all of Asia, within two years, had heard the gospel. Wow. Asia is a whole lot bigger than Mount Pleasant, than Isabella County, than the state of Michigan. Asia is a whole lot bigger. And in two years, they had spread the gospel everywhere. Why? Because they realized it was not a meeting. It wasn't a Sunday morning meeting. That was not the church. The church was us. The ecclesia going out using our authority to bind and loose, losing, using the power to sow the seed of the kingdom and letting it germinate in people and bring forth fruit, realized that we were the kingdom advancers. We were the kingdom advancers. Now, Romans 15, 19 says that all of, uh, from Jerusalem to Ilicrum, the gospel, 300,000 square miles was that area, had heard the gospel. The gospel had been spread. The gospel of the kingdom had been spread. Not just by Paul, but by who? The ecclesia. The ecclesia. This is what God is going to, wants to do. And I, I believe with all my heart, he's, we're, we're, people of God are going to respond to it. This is what God's calling the church to. All of us, all of us are to advance the kingdom. As we're going, we're to be spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. As we're going, we're to be binding and loosing and releasing the kingdom of God, releasing the will of God in the situation, taking authority over principalities and powers that are trying to rule in arenas that God has given us a sphere of influence in. You're a kingdom advancer. You are to spread the kingdom. Now, let's go to Matthew, and I'm going to just read a couple of portions here. Matthew chapter 5 Verse number 13 through 16, it says this, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Verse 14, You are the light of the world. Verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. So Jesus here is saying, You and me, we are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. We are to go and be a light so people can see Christ. We're to go and we are to, to, to flavor, flavor what people see. That's what salt does. Salt preserves. We're to go as the salt and the light. 
Now go with me to Matthew 13. And we see here, Jesus is teaching about the kingdom and he's using parables. Matthew chapter 13. And I, and I want to read verse number 31 through 33, I think are the ones that I want to take a look at here. Just, uh, yes, 31 to 33. Now look what it says about the kingdom. Another parable he put forth to them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. Another parable he spoke, he said, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was leavened. What's the kingdom of God like? It's like a mustard seed that as it's sown, as it's planted, it grows and becomes the greatest thing. It says here in this case, and the, and the kingdom of heaven is like leaven. What happens with leaven? It's yeast. When you put it into dough, it continues to spread and works its way through everything. We are to be those who sow the seed of the kingdom, who sow leaven, the leaven, the, the, the word of the kingdom into the lives of people, and then let it grow inside of them. Grow inside of them. As we sow the kingdom, as we sow the seed of the kingdom, God says it will grow inside of them. That's what happened to me. I was sharing Sunday morning. I picked up a hitchhiker who sowed the kingdom into me. He sowed the word of the kingdom, the gospel of Jesus into me. I didn't receive it. Months later, that seed grew to the place of that the kingdom came alive inside of me. Brothers and sisters, we are kingdom advancers. We are to go into the earth and we're to sow the seed of the kingdom. We're to put the leaven into the lump, <laughs> into the vessels, and allow that to grow inside of people. It's got to be more. Church, the ecclesia is not a meeting, a Sunday meeting. It's not a building. It's us. It's you. It's me. And we are to advance the kingdom and spread the kingdom, the kingdom of God. Sow the seeds of the kingdom into our culture. Listen to what Rick Joyner shared, and I'm going to close, close with this. Rick Joyner says this. This was in an article he shared last week on the kingdom of God. He said, the first and perhaps the most important way that the kingdom of God is different from the governments of men is that God's government is being built in the hearts of men, not in buildings, institutions, or bureaucracies. As the Lord stated in Luke 17, 20 to 21, the kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is, for behold, the kingdom of God is in you. As a historian, Will Durant said, Caesar sought to change men by changing institutions. Jesus changed institutions by changing men. Wow, that thought just riveted me. God has called the ecclesia, the church, his called out company to go and to sow the seeds of the kingdom into men and allow that seed to change the hearts of men and that will change the culture. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You're a kingdom advancer. I encourage you, begin to say, God, show me ways to impact and to sow, sow the kingdom, sow the seeds of the kingdom into my neighborhood, into my marketplace, into my family, so that those seeds can grow in men's hearts, men's, women's, children, youth, their hearts can be changed because the kingdom of God is powerful is powerful. Amen. Amen. Well, you have a great day today, and I encourage you to consider these scriptures we're talking about. Can't encourage you enough to read through the book of Acts and just see the focus of the ecclesia of the church was to preach the gospel of the kingdom, and the focus was to sow that seed into the hearts of people, and it wasn't just in the temple. It was in homes. It was as they were going they were sowing the seed. As you go today, look for opportunity to sow the seeds of the kingdom into the lives of people. 
God, I just bless these people, these brothers and sisters in Christ that are watching today, that are going to watch later. God, use us as kingdom advancers, God. Use us as men and women, God, who go out and sow the seeds of the kingdom, that plant seeds of the kingdom, and see hearts changed. And see hearts changed. See hearts bow to the King, Jesus Christ. Thank you for it, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hey, have a wonderful day. Pray God's blessings on you and everything you touch prospering.